Many fear artificial intelligence will replace people's jobs, but the technology will be able to enhance the workplace rather than take it over, some say. Joining us now is Dan Reich, the CEO and co-founder of Troop AI, to tell us more about the future of AI and chatbots. Hi, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, okay. Good. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So I built a Facebook Messenger chatbot last year. It was not very good, but I imagine that by the time it actually was good, it would be too late and somebody might take my job, maybe that chatbot. So how far away are we from getting to that point? Yeah, look, I think uh, society as a whole tends to overreact when it comes to technology. I don't think chatbots are going to replace anyone's job. I think, in fact, they'll enhance our jobs. If you think about when the typewriter, our personal computer, came out, people were freaking out that this is going to replace my job as a secretary or mm -hmm. an office manager. And in fact, it's enhanced their job. And I think we're seeing the same thing play out now with what people call chatbots. Right, okay. And so for troops, you guys are doing something specifically right now for sales teams. Yeah, that's right. So we believe that uh, software is improving and we think that the future of work is going to look less like uh, fields, forms, buttons, and boxes in a software that you log into, and it's going to look more like a conversation with a human being. Mm -hmm. So at Troops, we're working on artificial intelligence for work, and the way we think about the world is every company on Earth has customers, mm -hmm. and they have to manage information, relationships, revenue on those customers, and they do that in what's called a CRM, a Customer Relationship mm -hmm. Management Database. Problem is, the software is very hard and clunky to use, and we think we can make it easier by making it feel much more like a conversation with a personal assistant and less like logging into this big, heavy thing that you dread to use every single day. So this is software, though? It is software, yes. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about, look at Amazon Echo, for example. That is definitely not a human, it is technology. That version of technology is very different than the version of technology that we've been used to. Mm -hmm. And that is increasingly where the world is going. It's going to look more conversational, more human-like, and less like an app or pushing buttons or uh, typing into text boxes. And you're really this middle layer. You kind of sit in between the big CRM and the ultimate end user, right? You're kind of trying to make better use of that CRM. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, every company today has deployed some piece of software as their engine, if you will, to run their company. We don't want to replace that. That thing is very heavy. Um, what we want to do is grease the wheels, so to speak. So at Troops, we're building this layer, uh, an intelligent layer that lives on top of that CRM that makes it much easier to get information from your CRM or push information into that CRM. And in fact, we're building intelligence on top of it. So you don't even have to think. It will just prompt you. So let's say you have a meeting. Um, well, typically at companies, you would need to log notes. Hey, how did that meeting go? What did you learn? Uh, at Troops, we would be able to intelligent, intelligently notify you uh, and say, hey, do you want to log any calls? And again, it would look more like a conversation with a human being, right. unless like entering information into a, a text box. So how, what are some other ways that chatbots mm -hmm. will advance or enhance jobs in, in this new year? Yeah, certainly. I think, uh, you know, we think about two kind of buckets. Mm -hmm. Bucket one is customer service. Mm -hmm. So take, for example, you want to buy a car mm -hmm. or you want to buy a house. Typically, in the past, you'd have to look up all of this information and then go to the website and look up more information. Uh, today, what you might do is go to that website, let's say BMW, and an agent will say, hey, how are you? What are you looking for? How can I help you today? I'm looking for a four-wheel SUV that's green. And you might have a conversation with a non-human for the first several minutes. But at some point, a human will inject themselves into the conversation and help mm -hmm. you make a decision. Uh, that concept is also going to hold true on the enterprise side. So back to that CRM example, you might have this assistant that's guiding you through uh, what information should you be capturing to do your job better, or what decisions should you make. Who should you reach out to to make a sale or close a deal? Mm -hmm. um, so for us, we believe it certainly enhances everything. It mm -hmm. doesn't detract from anything whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I know you've been asked in the past why you're starting in this space, in this kind of middleman space, when a Slack or Google workplace uh, could, docs could get smarter just by pulling in the Google virtual assistant or Salesforce launching their own tools. Um, and you said you are happy to build off the backs of giants. Can you explain what that, what that means? Because aren't, wouldn't they cannibalize your business? Yeah, it's a great question. I think in the evolution of technology, you're always building on the backs of giants. Think about how many companies are building off the backs of Apple, for example. I mean, look at Uber. Mm -hmm. Uber is an app that lives on the iPhone. And if we were to have this conversation then, you know, could an Apple do this, hypothetically? Mm -hmm. And so I think the answer is always yes, they could, mm -hmm. but that's not their strategy. And so when I think about Slack and Microsoft, 
uh, you know, Microsoft just launched a product called Teams. Mm -hmm. This was yep. Satya, the CEO, his first decision that was a deviation from the legacy product roadmap um, when Bill Gates was there. And his whole view is messaging and conversational platforms are the future. And I think what we're gonna see happen is the conversational platforms, whether it's Slack mm -hmm. or Microsoft Teams or HipChat mm -hmm. or WhatsApp, these will be the operating systems of the future. This is where all teams will do work in this messaging interface. Uh, and if you think about why that is, you know, messaging is like literally the most ubiquitous behavior on earth, mm -hmm. digitally speaking. Right, you know, right. There are kids born every single day. When they grow up, they'll use one of these mobile devices, and the first behavior they will take, digitally speaking, will be messaging. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that is where and how people want to do work. And so we're just piggybacking off of that behavior and medium. Gotcha. And, and to talk about the messaging, uh, for an example, Casper, the mattress company, uh, they have a chat bot for sleepless people between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. that's you know programmed to have like funny photos and like funny little catchphrase, and people will literally just if they're sleepless talk with this chat bot mm -hmm. all night. So, do you think the future is people? Some people are going to want to be talking to a robot, even though just because it is that basic messaging system. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a balance. I think it depends on the use case. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see a world where I'd be incredibly frustrated talking to a non-human. Uh, and in fact, we've seen this play out in a few different examples. I mean, Microsoft, again, they try to launch a, a chat bot on Twitter that was totally automated and it blew up in their face. It was, yep. I think it was very Tay. racist. Yeah. Tay, exactly. Yep. Um, but again, there will be other, other use cases where there will be a blend. It'll be a combination of both human and, mm -hmm. and robot. So it depends on the use case. You know, there are companies building you know, chatbots are intelligent assistants for scheduling. Right. right. Do you really care to have a conversation with the person scheduling for you? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Maybe your your Casper assistant, that might be a little bit different though. Yeah. No scheduling, that's that would be helpful. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just that natural language interface, I think, is everyone is trying not the companies I mean are trying to get to this point where it's as if you were talking to mm -hmm. a human and you couldn't tell that it was an actual bot. Yeah, that's exactly right. Again, I think about Amazon as a great example. I mean, do you guys have an Echo at all? Or Not yet. Yeah. It's like the best thing in the world. You get out of bed and you ask, hey, uh, Alexa, what's the weather? And it just speaks to you. That is the way of mm -hmm. the world. That's where things are going. Uh, Google just came out with their own device that does something similar. And what's exciting about this is those companies are playing very much in the consumer space. Let me help you at home with the weather, with the news. There's a whole other category uh, for people at work. Like, mm -hmm. you will spend at least a third of your life doing work, arguably more for most people. What about all those people? What about making their life a little bit easier, more enjoyable? Mm -hmm. And at Troops, that's where our focus is. So while the mm -hmm. bigger companies like Amazon and Google are focusing on that consumer, mm -hmm. it's our belief that when you show up to work in the morning, your life should be a little bit easier, your day should be a little bit easier, and we believe the way to solve that is with an intelligent agent of sorts. Okay, awesome. Dan, thank you so much Thanks for joining for us. Thank you for having me.